Good evening all. Welcome to the new series that is RBC series. You will see some classical and rare neuro cases. You will try to understand what is RBC series at the end of the lecture. Coming to the first case, 4 year male, history of delayed milestones, history of irritability and headaches in 6 months. You can see there is actual T2 weighted and flare images. You can see there is abnormal fourth ventricle. There is hyperplasia of the vermis and the fourth ventricle is seen communicating with the cisterna magna. And even in the caudal sections, you can see this is the deep interpeduncular fossa, and these are the thinned out elongated superior cerebellar peduncles. And you can see this is the abnormal fourth ventricle communicating with the cisterna magna, resulting in typical batwing like configuration of the fourth ventricle. So, this is the classical molar tooth appearance of the brainstem, which occurs due to deep interpeduncular fossa and thinned out super elongated superior cerebellar peduncles and the hyperplasia of the vermis with abnormal fourth ventricle communicating with the cisterna magna. So this is the classical molar tooth appearance seen in Jobert syndrome. Next case, 4 year child came with macrocephaly, infantile spasms, development delay, delay and hemiparesis. You can see these are the actual T2 weighted images. You can see there is abnormal enlargement of the left cerebral hemisphere when compared with the right. Even there is ventriculomegaly on left side. There are abnormal white matter changes on left side and you can see there are abnormal gyri with effaced sulci in the left cerebral hemisphere. So this is nothing but an abnormal hamarthamatous proliferation of the left cerebral hemisphere which is classically seen in hemimegalencephaly. If it is a focal like thing and focal area with abnormal uh, gravet matter differentiation in an adult you can suspect gliomatosis cerebri but this is typically involving whole of the left cerebral hemisphere with displacement of the fox onto the other side. So this is a classical case of uh, hemimegalencephaly. Next case, 4 year child came with delayed milestones, scissors and visual disturbances. Here you can see frontal, there is absence of the septum pellucidum and also you can see there is abnormal inferior point down appearance of the frontal horns of the bilateral lateral ventricles. They, they are typically pointed down appearance of the frontal horns of bilateral lateral ventricles. Also you can see there is absence of septum pellucidum. And also you can see there is hyperplasia of the infundibulum and pituitary, pituitary. And also you can see there are small orbits with hyperplasia of the optic nerves and even optic chiasma. So this is typical batwing configuration of the frontal horns of bilateral lateral ventricles with absence of the pituitary and the infundibular stack and even small orbits, small optic nerves and absence of the optic chiasma with absence of the septum pellucidum and midline structures. This is a classical case of septo-optic dysplasia. Next case, 4 year male with history of mental retardation with hypotonia, diffuse muscle weakness and atrophy. You can see there is abnormal cerebellum, even there is atrophy of the cerebellum with multiple cystic foci noted scattered in the cerebellum. So multiple tiny cystic foci of varying sizes scattered in the cerebellum. And also you can see there is supratentorial ventriculomegaly even abnormal white matter that is hyper intense abnormal enlarged white matter is seen even the, there is VP shunting is done for the treatment of hydrocephalus. So child with hypotonia, diffuse muscle weakness and atrophy with abnormal cerebellar configuration with multiple microsis and hydrocephalus and by abnormal white matter changes. So we can definitely suspect congenital muscular dystrophy in this case. Next case, 2 year male with history of mac macrocephaly, motor delay, gradual onset of ataxia, spasticity, dysarthria and extrapyramidal symptoms. You can see there is abnormal hyper intense white matter. There is enlargement of the white matter with thinned out cortex. And also you can see this is the macrocephaly is also there clinically. And also you can see there are typical cysts noted in the anterior temporal lobes and even anterior medial temporal lobes. So and there is no restricted diffusion on DWA. So abnormal spongiform enlargement of the white matter with cysts noted in the anterior temporal lobe or anterior medial temporal lobes in a child with these symptoms definitely suspect van der Naap disease that is megalencephalic leukoencephalopathy with subcortical cysts. Next case 35 year female with chronic history of memory impairment, ataxia, sensory neural hearing loss and visual distortions. You can see th there is hyper intense areas noted in the body and spleen of carpus callosum. These hyper intense areas are typically located in the roof of the carpus callosum and they are seen projecting from the roof downwards and also the lack of involvement of the callosoceptal interface. 
and also you can see there are round to oval round ball like hyperintense lesions also noted in the posterior of internal capsule even in the brain stem on ivy contrast you can see there is patchy heterogeneous enhancement and linear curvilinear enhancement noted along these hyperintense areas so this is typical eye skill appearance so this is typical hyperintensity is involving the roof of the carpus callosum projecting downwards typically resembling the eye skills which are seen in typically winter seasons and frozen conditions and also associated with history of memory impairment sensory neurohearing loss and visual distortions we can suspect suzak's disease which is nothing but retino cochleo cerebral vasculopathy or secret syndrome that is small infarctions of the cochlear retina and encephalitic tissue so remember this eye skill appearance and roof of the carpus callosum is involved in suzak's disease 44 year male with chronic history of facial spasms dysarthria diplopia ataxia and spasticity you can see there are hyperintensities noted in the pons and even pontocerebellar peduncles which are hyperintense on flare even caudal brainstem is also involved on ivy contrast you can see there is punctate linear or calvilinear perivascular enhancement noted in the pons even in the pontocerebellar peduncles so this is a cl classical case of clippers which is nothing but chronic lymphocytic inflammation with pontine perivascular enhancement which is responsive to steroids so whenever you see hyperintensity is typically involving the pons pontocerebellar peduncles and with linear or curvilinear perivascular or vascular enhancement in a patient with history of spasm dysarthria diplopia definitely suspect clippers so this is a new recently described entity thanks to dr devender pal singh danotha for contributing this case next case 38 year female with chronic headache and recurrent seizures in 5 years you can see there is a hypointense lesion noted in the right amygdala and hippocampus which is heterogeneously hypointense on t2 and even on flare it's showing significant blooming on grt and this lesion is densely calcified on ct and it is also located outside the ventricle so this is a classical case of capnan which is calcifying pseudoneoplasm of the neuroaxis or capnan other differentials when it can be considered are calcified granuloma but temporal lobe calcified granulomas are unlikely and also other differential can be cavernous malformation but the reticulated core typically seen in t2 is absent in this case and also there will be no significant perilesional edema in these type of lesions so remember capnan other less likely dd can be calcified neoplasms next case 26 year male with chronic history of ataxia mental retardation recurrent strokes cataract and swelling posterior to the legs you can see there are ill defined hypointense areas with patchy restricted diffusion and dwi in the cerebellum and the deep cerebellar white matter and also there are hyperintensities in the posterior of internal capsule you can see there are cystic areas noted in the deep cerebellar white matter and in the dentate nuclei associated with atrophy of the cerebellum and brain stem and they are showing significant blooming on gre so considering the history of ataxia mental retardation recurrent strokes and even swelling posterior to the legs so in the same patient you can see there is a fat containing lesion in the achilles tendon so this is a classical case of cerebro tendinous xanthomatosis which is nothing but a lipid storage disorder which is autosomal recessive which is due to deficiency of uh, steroid 27 hydroxylase enzyme which leads to excessive beta cholesterol deposition in the uh, cerebral tissues and even arteries and even posterior to the legs so this is a classical case of cerebro tendinous xanthomatosis next case 44 year female with chronic history of postural headache ataxia and sensory neural hearing loss you can see there are hypointense areas noted in the folia and even hypointense areas showing significant blooming on gre noted along the cortical surface even in the along the brain stem and also in the sulci of bilateral cerebral hemispheres which so this is a classical case of chronic hemosiderin deposition along the leptomeninges which is a, nothing but described as superficial sclerosis so the superficial sclerosis in this case the cause turned out to be dural defect or dural tear in the which was diagnosed on ct myelography and which also presents as spontaneous intracranial hypotension so the cause for the superficial sclerosis is spontaneous intracranial hypotension in this case which is due to dural tear so remember superficial sclerosis in this as hemosiderin deposition along the leptomeninges next case 35 year female with multiple skin lesions seizures and ataxias in childhood you can see there is significant cerebellar atrophy and there are multiple areas of blooming on gre noted scattered in bilateral cerebral hemispheres 
So this is a classical case of ataxia till injectasia. Next case, 35 year male with clumsiness of hands, slurring of speech, wasting of muscles of face and limbs. You can see there are hyper intensities noted along the cortical spinal tracts, that corticospinal tracts, noted extending into the brainstem and also in the posterior limb of internal capsule and into the periventricular deviate matter and corona radiata. So whenever you see symmetrical hyper intensities along the corticospinal tracts with these typical histories, suspect amyotropic lateral sclerosis. Next case, 35 year male with chronic history of seizures, headache and asymmetry of face since childhood. You can see there is enophthalmos of the right orbit. There is even atrophy of the tissues, facial tissues and subcutaneous tissues on right side when compared with left side. You can see there is associated ventriculomegaly on the right side. And even there is mild edema on the right side, which is maybe due to seizures, which has, because the patient has recurrent attacks of seizures in the recent 10 days. And also, so whenever you see there is chronic history, headache with asymmetry of the face, with these typical imaging findings, with atrophy of the facial tissues on right side and hemiatrophy on that side with ventriculomegaly. And you can also see in the clinical radiograph, clinical picture of the patient, you can see there is atrophy of the facial tissues on the right side when compared with the left side with enophthalmos. So this is a classical case of Peri-Romberg syndrome or progressive hemifacial atrophy. Next case, 17 year male with chronic headache came with sudden onset of seizures, vomitings, following trauma. You can see there is a cystic lesion noted in the left temporal lobe convex T. There is no restricted diffusion on DWI and the cystic lesion is completely suppressed on flare. And also you can see there is an extraaxial hyperintense collection which is extending along the left frontotemporal parietal lobe convex T's which is not showing restricted diffusion on DWI and not showing blooming on GRE. So the, and also you can see in the coronal sections this cystic lesion is seen f communicating with that of the extraaxial hyperintense collection. So this is a case of arachnoid cyst with rupture and spontaneous subdural hygroma. So rupture of the arachnoid cyst is rare which may be associated with spontaneous subdural hygroma. I think this is the last case, 26 year female with 4 months of amenorrhea and abnormal spine findings and ultrasound. You can, this is a fetal MRI. You can see these are the coronal sections and even axial sections. You can see there is a hypointense Raphael-like structure noted in the lumbosacral area which is, is causing split of the spinal cord. And also you can see in the axial sections the two hemicords are clearly seen on the axial sections which is caused by the split of the spinal cord by this fibrous raphe. Generally, we see split cord malformation in adults, but split cord malformation and diastomatomelia on fetal MRI is rare. So I want to show this case. And these are all rare but classic cases. That's why I have coined the name as RBC series. I hope you have liked this series. Thank you all.